so let's let's recall where, where we got to. So we had fixed um, two natural numbers k and n. And then we have the Grassmannian. We are KM. And then we've defined a certain collection of diagrams, a positive graph diagrams, of type KM. So, So let's let's draw this <coughs> strand in black. Okay, this strand will be dotted. questions yesterday about the fact we had a graph. Um, but the graph comes with some marked parts, if you like. These are the stands in the, in the data. Okay, so I'm drawing the stands one by one. So, I just wanted to draw each one a different colour. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four. Again, that's it, that's the whole day. So one three, one four, one two, two three, three four. Okay, and the quiver looks like this. So we have an arrow here, arrow here, an arrow here, an arrow here. Let me just draw the internal quiver to start with. So I'm not drawing the boundary arrows. Okay, so it's quite small. So let's, let's uh, formalize what we said at the end of last time. So C will be delta I, but I labels a boundary alternating region. And then XD will be the other labels. Okay, and then Q 
QD will be the quiver with the vertices C union XD, that's the disjoint union. Okay, and then the arrows. Just like this. Okay, so there's no, it should be no K here, and it should be an interval of length K. So that's why it was okay. Yeah. So here K is 2. So they have length 2. Okay, so now what could happen if you draw this quiver is you could actually get two cycles. apply a twisting move. We would get this like that. Okay, and then we would have two sides of So we might get two cycles here, so we just, if you like, we could just cancel them. That's, that's one nice way to say it. Okay, or if you prefer, you could take a reduced diagram and then um, remove all the double bits. So take a reduced diagram. We regard these as equivalent diagrams anyway. That's the idea. Okay, so then this gives us a seed. XD, which is C union XD, QD in this field of fractional fractions. Cluster structure, we only need this internal quiver. Okay, but we have a slightly larger quiver which we'll call QD tilde. It's the quiver with boundary arrows. Okay, so the way this works, if you have this on the boundary, you would draw an arrow. Yeah, essentially using the same rule. So you would draw an arrow between the vertices like that. And the same if it's the other way around. Just switch it around. So the extra quiver, the extra arrows will be like this. Please have a nice alternating structure again, like the other okay, in this example. Okay, and again, we might have, um, there might be something strange happening on the boundary. So, what could happen on the boundary, I guess we draw the whole thing. It could be like this. Now, 
we apply a boundary to it, we get this picture here. So the kind of cancellation that happens on the boundary is slightly different. These are not, this is not cancelling two cycles. This is removing a boundary arrow and regarding the new arrow that appears as a boundary arrow. Okay, but, or more simply, you could say, well, again, take an induced type. So that, that's quite interesting, I think, this sort of different kind of cancellation that appears on the boundary here. Now, in the cluster structure, these boundary areas don't appear. So in this seed, we only have the internal quiver. The reason um, we're considering this other quiver is because we're going to look at the end of water measurements later on. And these vertices will be objects, and there will be arrows between them in the quiver at the end of water measurement, which are not detected by the cluster algebra. The theorem of Scott. So there was a question yesterday asking for a reference. Yes, the theorem. So it's just millions and what's the other bit? So, so in this homogeneous coordinate ring for Grassmannian is a cluster algebra. Okay, and we could take S D as an initial seed. Okay, for some KN diagram. then all of the SD will be seeds. Okay, so the SD. Prime for all D prime. Postnikov K and I. Okay, so if you've got one of these seeds, you can mutate it and get all of the others. All of those diagrams appearing in this sequence. And also, it follows from that because, because every Fluke coordinate appears in some diagram, all of the Fluke coordinates are clustered over. quite interesting because I mean, normally the idea is that you generate all these cluster variables and they generate the cluster algebra. We don't need all the cluster variables, we only need these Fugger coordinates. They actually generate the coordinate ring already. So often arguments about this cluster algebra are based on these, these particular seeds here. So you've got these sort of fundamental seeds that play a role. And the other seeds are a bit mysterious. Okay, so it's also good to see Gekdemann, Shapiro, Weinstein. So 
So as I mentioned, we have an alternative proof of this fact. Um, not using positive graph diagrams, so that's still the fact that it's a graph for um, and in their book they, they detail how we all this way. In fact they focus on, if you like, a very nice cluster graph diagram, a very regular one, and use that to prove the cluster structure. Yeah, it's, it's not a picture. But I should emphasize in general there are infinitely many seeds. So there are finitely many positive graph diagrams. Because there are finitely many Kluge coordinates. But in general, we can be cluster type is infinite. K is 2, then it's finite, for example. <coughs> okay, so as, as, as Claire said, um, there's some interest in trying to categorify the cluster structure here. So that's the main thing of my talk is categorification of this cluster structure here. Okay, the first categorification was done by Gerd Geist de Klerk and Schroer. And then I would like to talk about the categorification by Jensen, King, and Sue. So. Just except just one frozen variable was missing. Okay. Um, and I think that, that's what I understand from the motivation of JPS was to, to break that gap. But the, the categorification is actually uh, significantly different from the original way. Okay, so we need a Frobenius category in case we have we have frozen variables, and um, that's what the, the Frobenius categories are used to categorify such so cluster objects. The idea is that the projective injectives correspond to the frozen variable. And in the triangular category, you don't have those projective injectives. So that's the, the case where there are no frozen variables. OK, so we have our circular graph C. So QC is the quiver corresponding to C. So Q naught is C naught is the vertices. And that is Zn. And Q1 is arrows Xa and Yp for A and C1. So Xa goes from A minus 1 to A. YA goes from A to A minus 1. So I just draw it. So the x is increased and the y is decreased. Okay, so this is then is the quiver of the affine pre-projective algebra type uh, a and minus one tilde. Okay, um, in fact the algebra is a quotient of that algebra. So, so we take the path algebra of this quiver, and then we factor out by relations. Okay, if we just took x, y, and y, x, we'd get the pre-projective algebra. Okay, so this is shorthand for um, doing this at each vertex. So this is really Do X 
x i and y i come back, or to do y i minus one, x minus one and come back for all. Okay, this is just shorthand notation for this relation for every vertex. You can go out and come back to one adjacent vertex, and it's the same if going out and come back to the other adjacent vertex. Okay, so if we just took those relations, we'd get pre projected algebra of affine type. Okay, and they've added an extra relation written in the same kind of way, but x to the k is y to the n minus k. Okay, so this just means take kx is starting from where you need from a given vertex, from any vertex. And that's the same as going around the other way with the y. Okay, and then they also consider b hat, which is the completion of b with respect to the arrow ideal of b bus. Okay, so what, why consider the completion? The point is that the Kruschnitt theorem holds for the completion, but not for the original. Well, it's not known for the original. Okay, so note. Kruschnitt holds. Okay, so what do I mean? It holds for B hat part. This means finitely generated. Not known, or at least not known, JKS or to me, uh, <laughs> not known for yeah, the be Okay, and this, this completion is quite mild. I mean, you're, you're just allowing infinite combinations of uh, parts rather than just the finite ones you normally take for the part algebra. Okay, and B, B bar and B hat are both Gorenstein. The sense of who writes. Okay, so this means left and right Noetherian. Nice algebra, you know quite a lot about it. Oh, well, I'll say more about that later. But in particular, you can write down the projective into composables quite explicitly. And that's what's behind these statements here. So this, this B hat is finite over um, the commutative Noetherian complete local ring, which, uh, which is its center, um, which is actually a power series. And in that situation, you know the crucial is being important. And again, for the subjective dimension, you've got quite a lot of control over the projective. OK, so the point about this having a Gorenstein ring, so if B is B bar or B hat, we can take the Cohen modules, maximum Cohen Macaulay modules are over there. And in this context, we can define them just like this. Let's say x to i and b is 0 for all i greater than 0. Okay, so what, what we're doing there is we're forcing the projectives to become injective, if you like. And so in general, of course, the I mean, the projectives over B will not be injective, but in this subcategory they will. Okay, to get for B this category, you want the projectives and injectives to coincide. So morally, that's what we're doing. 
it says it's an act law. sequences which we regard as the short exact sequences and then they satisfy axioms like that they satisfy by short exact sequences in the beginning category. Okay, so it's an exact category. And the projectives and the injectives and the projectives and the injectives go inside. Okay, so in, in the categorification we model the extended clusters by cluster sorting objects in this category. Okay, so we're going to take we're going to focus on actually the B hat pairs. So then we have the core Schmidt theorem. It's more reasonable to talk about cluster sorting objects in that context. So we start doing mutations. Okay, so extended clusters. So the definition of cluster sorting object in the Frobenius case is exactly the same as in the triangulated case. In fact, the stable category of F is a triangulated category. So there's a very close relationship between the two. So same definition. will always be some elements of your cluster sorting object. Okay, if you look at the definition, I mean, they, they are exorthogonal on both sides, every object in F. Okay, and if you look at the definition of cluster sorting object, you'll see that that forces them to be some elements. So, so the projective objectives are some elements. Objectives like every cluster sorting object, so you're not going to be able to exchange them. Just like you can't mutate a frozen variable. So let's assume this X is indecomposable and not projective. Then there is a unique indecomposable X prime in F such that T prime is U plus X prime. It's also a cluster tilting object. Okay, so I just try to think a bit 
So why, why do you know this is true? In fact, the, the proof in JKNX uses the fact that this holds in the GLS categorification. And that proof um, seems to be quite explicit to the fact that we work with over a predicted algebra. So GLS work with a finite type pre predicted algebra. Okay, and they, sh they show this fact in that context. Okay, so the, the theory for Frobenius categories is, is less is less mature than the triangulated category case. There are some results in this paper, Burani, Yama, Wright, and Scott, um, that uh, Blair mentioned. Um, okay, and to apply those, you need to know that Frobenius category is um, home finite. Okay, but this Frobenius category is not home finite. That could be, with a bit of work, you can actually extract the results you need from, from the IRFs. Um, but have, that's not yet to be done. So T prime is the limitation. T of X. So, so in particular, what, what you'd like to know is that the, the quiver of the new, new Edwards algebra is the mutation of the old one. So I don't think there is a general result of that kind yet, unless you've seen one quite Okay, but yes, we, we do have this mutation property here. So it would be good to understand what, what are the objects corresponding to the Booker coin. continues going down. Okay, and I will label so that's the next one. So this one, Y2, X3, X4, Y5, Y6. So this will be Y1. Okay, so the X is all going from left to right, and the Y is going from right to left. corresponds to a single vertex in the quiver Q6 of the algebra. Okay, and we put a copy of the field at each of the vertices in this diagram. 
a and each arrow is just an identity map between those two things. Okay, so you're just putting the same here. So x1 and so on. Every, every arrow just stands for an identity map. Okay, and then just take Okay, so yes, let me say mi in cmb bar, and then mi hat in cmb hat. Okay, so to get mi, you just take the direct sum of each of, um, of all of these spaces, all these one-dimensional vector spaces, take the direct sum of all of those. Okay, and the direct sum in any given column will give you and um, the uh, vector space at that vertex in the future. Okay, so we said we've got some kind of covering of the algebra here. Okay, so in this column here will be the vector space of the vertex 6. Okay, so it will be um, the direct sum of that uh, in many copies of the field. Okay, and then you should do that all the way along. And the completed version, you just take the direct product instead of the direct sum. Okay, so we have these nice modules here. Okay, so when do they give you a cluster tilting object? So to, to understand that, we need to know when the extensions between them vanish. Okay, and that should be the same as when the corresponding Fuca coordinates appear in the same cluster. Okay, and as a, you can actually read that off the two subsets directly as a combinatorial condition. So, 2k subsets i and j at 1 and are non crossing. And in the oral literature, it's sometimes referred to as being weakly separated. Okay, so if they don't exist. With A and C in I not J and B and D in J not F. You could think of this as some kind of generalized notion of two diagonals not crossing. So this, this is some kind of generalization of what the work that was talking about in the If K is 2, then, then it's really much more directly corresponding. Okay, so um, what you could do is imagine a, a circle where you've got the numbers 1 to N, just the circle C. Okay, and I not J, if you, if you mark off and elements, they will form some kind of uh, interval in the circle in, in such a way that you, the elements of J and I form an interval. Okay, so J and I and I know J must look like this. Okay, so they can't be interlaced. You must be able to divide them up in such a way that they're not interlaced. But this is Okay, so, and this is this is the criteria you need to say when the extension extensions. Okay. 
case, say, that in fact the maximal collections of non-crossing subsets are those appearing in the crossing curve diagrams. And now I'm going to check this. It's certainly, if you look in, I should probably just refer to all three. So I think, I mean, in Scott's paper, Scott cites various results of crossing curve, which hadn't been published at that point. Maybe it's an accreditation of course. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it cites various results of Buster Clubs that she needs. So um, if you look in Scott's paper, you can see the results there. If you look in the preprints of Buster Clubs that appeared a bit later, you can see those results. And then there is a more recent paper of the Buster Clubs Spire. Um, put all of that together, and if you see that the maximal collections non-crossing case subsets of, of 1M are precisely It's the number of indeterminates in this function here. I wrote down before. And it's the number of layers appearing in the slip of diagram. So here you can see it's pi, which is c squared plus 1. Okay, so then we can take the corresponding objects, and they turn out to be. Uh, you can see from this that they're maximum rigid. Just the top two objects. Let's see. Say, D of AN plus the cup diagram. Say, let's set TD to be the sum of the MI. I a label, and then we also have T D hat will be the sum of the completed versions. Okay, then T D hat is cluster filtings in our Fabini's category F. Okay, and in fact, to prove this, I think we need again to use the guys for true categorification. So this categorification lives above the GLS categorification, so they can, they can lift some results from GLS and pitch it up to the OK, so an interesting point that comes up with these categorifications is reachable objects. So you could start with these cluster sorting objects here. We know you can mutate them all into each other. But you can start mutating in a different direction, away from the diagrams, and you get a whole load of cluster tilting objects. But do you hit every cluster tilting object? That's not known. You could do JKS or DLS categorifications. So a cluster tilting object is reachable. is reachable if it can be reached from a TV hat equivalently all TV hats via a finite sequence. Okay. 
Okay, so we have to restrict to the reachable ones to state the theorem about particular replication. Okay, and the direct summons of these will be also called reachable, so a, a rigid indecomposable. The map. I, I will correct this statement in the from the objects of F. See X. Well, actually, it can't be a map because the objects do not form a set. <laughs> but if you allow me that. <laughs> well, yes, I think that's, they may not form a set, perhaps. Okay, so M maps to. Satisfies. Well, Psi M depends only on F up to S one. Okay, so the idea behind this path is that we're going to get the cluster algebra out. So If you apply it to a direct sum, you just get the product of the two elements. Okay, and most critical, if we could look at the extension group between two objects. sequences. Okay, then psi x, psi y. So, these, so A, B, and C say that psi is a cluster character. should correspond to an exchange relation. Okay, and it's 
probably a good point to make a remark. F is stably particular the R. Again, this, this follows from the fact that that's true for the Chrysler Shrek categorization. The stable category is the same in both cases. Okay. So that means that the stable category of the Fabinus category is T and local. Okay, this stable category is triangulated. Okay, so it's reasonable to ask it for the R. Okay. So it's, it's two for the R in this sense that uh, Matt talked about. Okay, so why did I mention that here? Because it's clear if one of these equalities holds the other one. says we get the cluster variables and the clusters out of this. So in particular, and I corresponds to delta I. Oh, am I? Okay, and isomorphism clusters the reachable cluster tilting objects. So here, TD hat would correspond. Oh, then you should be. More precise here, yes, I should be careful. C, I would say C. Yes. Doesn't matter which one. Work out what the seed is because it's just the quiver. Okay, this result, as I suppose, is correct. There is a question here about whether it's, you could write seeds here. Here, can you get the can you get the quiver of the seed out of it? So you should be able to read that off in more symmetrical here. Okay, so I think that's not known that way. But I will say something about that. So the idea is that T D hat would correspond to um, the cluster curve.
Yes, so as, as you can see from what I'm saying, the, the picture isn't quite complete. There's still, there's still a few questions. And a particular question is, um, can you read out the quiver here? OK, but we're actually going to look at a, in, in the case of the Postikoff diagram, as I'm saying, that's what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. Um, and I'm also going to explain that what is the endomorphism algebra of this Postikoffian object here. That's, that's, that's what uh, BKM is, is all about, it's describing that. Um, and that's where the diamond models come in. So to really describe this endomorphous diagram, we use um, some diamond models. Yes, the question is, what about the dimension here is more than one? Um, you have various classes, equivalence classes of sequences here. And could they be surfaces in the background of the content? But I mean, in this context, I don't think anything is known. I mean, I can sort of cheat and say if you're in a non synchronized context, these dimensions themselves might be greater than one, but of course that's the wrong question that anyone can look at. <laughs> uh, the, the rank over an appropriate so, uh, ring, which would still be one in this case. So yeah, at least to me, I don't think anything is known.